how are you all health wise coming out of this one? I guess Franks and yeah, Chuma are the two. will be in the yeah. protocol. And then uh, obviously, uh, you know, Chuma didn't make it to the game. So I kind of assess where he's at, uh, what's the best plan for him. But Felipe's in the protocol. In the 0 for 4 red zone film breakdown, how'd that go? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, when you look at the stat at the, uh, the end of the game, you know, when you look in the stat sheet, uh, clearly, you know, we need to be better there. But in every individual drive, you break it down, you, you know, critique yourself on the calls, the situations that came up, right? We had the one before the end of the half, um, with the penalty and then, and then the time and all that issue. And then uh, going in before that, you know, we had some things we got to be a lot cleaner on. We had our chances and uh, got to give Baltimore credit, but there's some things we can do better there too. Be like, is there a trend there that goes back it, it, further than last week in terms of your red zone efficiency? You no, notice? because before that, I mean, again, you take what you want with the rankings. Josh, I believe we were top 10 in the red zone. I think whatever we're at now this morning, 13, doesn't tell the story. I mean, talking about trips on there, if I thought we were completely, uh, something was a major issue. Every week's a little bit different of the story. Um, we obviously need more points. I mean, I'm not going to rationalize that. But like you said, there are different things that have come up. You get down there, you get a penalty, the end of the half, um, and then another time, we got to be better a little bit operationally, uh, just some things mechanically, and then one of them, you got to make a decision to kick a field goal because of the situation in the game. So those are all different, uh, and it's a fine line trying to make excuses and rationalize them, but just the reality of the situation. Again, if we thought it was some epidemic, when you're top ten in the league, it's not completely broken, but we need more points. That's for for uh, sure. What, um, what? I thought he did a nice job. I mean, we we were in a little more of a drop back game, which was good to see from him. I thought he uh, delivered, especially as the game went on. I thought he made some critical throws in some critical situations. Um, that's that's what I saw, Scott. But uh, again, we came up short, which was frustrating. But I thought he made a lot of progress. When you're looking at guys that are banged up or flat injured now, like a guy like Chuma, since there is no playoffs, do you approach it differently in terms of shutting them down for the year or kind of keeping some guys that have been battling through some stuff, maybe some vets, and not play them because of uh, of keeping them healthy for the longer term? Do you play that? You got an example of a precedent of that? Uh, like I mean, around the league? Telling or? guys to shut guys down? No, well, I just did the injury report. Yeah. This is an important game for us. We need to play well, and we need to go win. It's important to win at home. It's important to win. Regardless of you're building short term, obviously we came up short of our goal, you know. Uh, but the you know, next step, we need to finish this out right. We need to win, and then we need to go into the off season. And, and if there's anything, we you know, we have, we'll have areas to address there. But this week is is the most important thing for us professionally and every guy in that locker room. That, that's that's the culture you're trying to you know the competition you have and. Again, you go back and look at these games, and we've been close, but uh, obviously we came up short. But we're, we're here to win, and win this week, and we'll get the best guys out there. A lot of guys were you know, disappointed or eliminated, but they kept talking about finishing strong. The staff, how do you uh, try to motivate them to, you know, you know, finish strong? Job, he led. Mm -hmm. That's what you're hired to do. And if you if you can't get motivated, you're not self-motivated, you're probably the wrong person for the job. And certainly you see examples around the league, you can rationalize a lot of things. Uh, you can find a lot of excuses to not do your best. Uh, that certainly won't be here, uh, certainly not as long as I'm here. That's just not the way these guys are wired. Delighted. we got a lot of prideful guys, players and coaches, and uh, we, we're thankful to have another opportunity to go out and compete. We owe it to our fans, we owe it to ourselves, and uh, that's, what we're, that's our charge this week. When you look at this uh, 2022 draft class as a collective, have they exceeded your expectations at all? We got a lot of good uh, young players in here. Again, it's not fair to individually. All of them individually have different situations here. You know, some of them have been, you know, I didn't necessarily had to play earlier. Uh, some of them, you know, where we're at now, you know, they're getting their opportunity. But some of it by injury or other, other decision making. So it's, we got a lot of good young players. I mean, there's a lot of huge growth you have from, Year one is to year two. That's a big important. I mean, look how much growth that Chris Lindstrom's had from year three to year four. Those are huge years. He goes two, three, four. And that's what you like to see as we continue to build. What do you want to see from Desmond in these last two games? Yeah, just another step. I thought Josh, I thought he took a good step. Again, we get thrown into the fire. Got out of New Orleans, play veteran defense. Uh, thought he handled some situations. We obviously 
had some uh, more success through the air. Saturday in Baltimore against another really good defense that puts a lot of pre-snap stress on you. And I thought he, he handled that well for, for a young player. And he, I think he got more comfortable in the pocket. I think we need another step here. I mean, ultimately, we need another step in to win, too. So as long as he keeps making his progress, I think that's a good sign. Is there something specific that he needs to do to take that step, or is it more a little bit better at everything? Well, I mean, again, I mean, we haven't put the, the entire game plan in, right? It's just Monday afternoon here. But as you go in there, operate. We need to be cleaner in situational football. We need to obviously score more and, and win. I mean, so it's another step in the evaluation of it, how he handles those situations, third down, red zone, fourth down, when you decide to go for it. Um, again, pre-snap, got to have a situation in the half, in the games, all that stuff. It all goes into it. In terms of, uh, well, actually, there are a couple of things I'll ask. First, uh, we never followed up, I guess, the other week, last week. Did Marcus end up having a surgery? Yeah, I thought I said that. I don't remember. Uh, I thought Shed, somebody had. Shed scheduled. Shed scheduled. I'm not yeah, sure yeah, we ever. Yeah. Okay. And I apologize if I did not. Yeah, yeah. I thought one of y'all asked me that. Uh, I think uh, you asked me that. We'll have to go fact check you. That, that's fine. Maybe on Friday when it's not recorded. No, I, no, I, don't, I don't know. Well, anyways, no, and, yes, he did. Okay. Uh, and in terms of just kind of how you're going to, I guess, structure the last two weeks, I mean, is it just business as normal? Do you try to do things a little to, bit differently? Well, in terms of what? I, gotta, I don't know what you're insinuating. Like, I we have a job what? to do. Yeah. We're going to come in here Wednesday. We're going to have a normal in season Wednesday. We're going to practice. We're going to prepare. Thursday, we come in here, like we have a normal Thursday, Friday, Saturday day before the game. Everything we do, we have a normal week. I don't know what you're saying. Like, I, I guess maybe if you were trying to get maybe some of the younger guys in, like a Darby or like uh, maybe get below. What, what do you think that's, 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 is that fair to those other guys that are competing for jobs? I mean, other than Grady and Jake, I'm going to have everybody in here is either on a rookie contract or on a minimum on the last year of their deal. That's disrespectful to those other guys in the receiver room. You really want to think about it. Go tell Kaderil Hodge, hey, buddy, you've been working, playing so hard all year, you're not going to get a shot. That's not fair to this team. It's not fair to him. I mean, everybody. I mean, he's got to be merit-based. I mean, this isn't – yeah, I understand the question, and I don't fault you for asking the question, but take a step back and think about everybody and everybody in that locker room, what morale, what leadership really is, and not fantasy, you know, these hypothetical uh, GM situations. Like, there's a lot of young guys that are playing we feel good about. And we need to prepare to win. I mean, that's a big part of it, too. So, again, the best guys are going to play. And we're going to do everything we can to win against Arizona. Did you hear anything from New York on any of the officiating? Again, those are questions? private conversations that you're, we're not allowed to talk about. They are where they are. I mean, I, I don't think there's any nothing I can do to change that, Michael. So, regardless of how I feel. Coach, we got a little. Yeah, it went to overtime, and, and Tampa ended up winning. So, you know, we, we understand Arizona, same thing. It's a National Football League. Regardless of what the records are coming in, there's a lot of prideful guys. To Michael's point, there's a lot of – look, a lot of guys got to have motivation from everywhere. We understand where we're at in our program, and there's some things we feel good about, and there's some things that we, we need to clearly make improvements on. Uh, it's prideful guys. And like, once that ball's kicked off, you got to play your best to win in this league. And we know it'll be a challenge, and – so they got private players and coaches, and we know we're looking forward to Sunday. And Luke Thorley, uh, you know, what do you remember about him coming out of Penn State? I, I didn't think he was a 45 attempt guy. Yeah, again, I, I got my own things to worry about right now. We'll, we'll, as we put the game plan in, D-Led, I'm, like I said, we're, we're going to focus on ourselves. We're going to take the next couple of days, put this plan in, and get ready to go. How have you seen uh, Drew Dahlman make progress this year? Made a lot of progress. I mean, his first year starting in the NFL at center and at a critical position for us and for most offenses around the league. He's a guy that touches the ball first every play. He sets the table for us, a lot of things. Um, I thought he's really stabilized in there. And like a lot of players, there's things we'll look to improve on as we do every, every day as, as coaches. But Drew's had a, a pretty productive, it's his second year, but first year start. You said it's important to win, and if I can manage this question without sounding like a smart aleck, why? What do you what, what do you I mean, insinuate? It, tangibly, draft position is 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 helped with with losses. Why? Why do you? It had that hasn't entered your mind clearly. Why, in your mind, is it important that? Because that's what you're trying to build here. I mean, you go back and you look at it and you study, you know, history. That's what I do when you when you take a job like Terry and I took over. 
there is precedent. There are some things you try to study people that had success doing that. Certainly Seattle in their first two years with uh, Pete Carroll and John Schneider. I believe they went seven and nine those first two years. And I think first year they kind of got in playoffs coming, coming up the road here in the NFC South. Uh, maybe they'll get in with a losing record. But, you know, in the next year, and then they, they got that thing going. You look at Buffalo, a little bit earlier, they took a dip, knowing what they were trying to do. And they certainly competed at every win. And San Francisco, the same thing. The recent San Francisco, you can go back to Bill Walsh, you can go back to what Kyle and John Lynch have done. And there's usually a common thread there. They had a plan, trying to get the right people in there, trying to build it the right way. You're competitive. You're trying to learn what it takes to win, win those situations. I don't know any coach, the same thing I said in the spring, you know, never apologize for setting expectation. Your objective is to win. To go in there not to win, that's disrespectful of this game, to the players in that locker room. I understand the context you're talking about draft position, but there's also a graveyard of some horrendous draft picks just because you're up there high. you got to get the right, and some of it is luck. Yeah, if there's a no-brainer top pick, usually history will tell you that's not the case. And so I, I, I get all that, that stuff. But go back and just study the draft, study that. You're trying to build a culture of winning, winning the, winning the right way, Again, we've come in a lot of these close games with a young team, and you know we've been charging back, but we haven't gotten out of the hump the last four weeks. We need to do that. Desmond Ritter needs to go in there. We need to go win a football game. Those are important, especially if he's going to be the quarterback of the future when you're asking why. I have no problem answering that question. There's a lot of whys to it. But I, and, and then the flip side of the argument, which and I'm not hard-headed and I'm not like a old-school P coach that's got my head you know, bashed up against the wall that says to run hard, like, I understand the big picture. Again, the draft position, history will tell you that just because you're sitting at whatever spot doesn't guarantee you're going to get a good player if you don't have the right process and identify it. Maybe luck is in your favor, maybe not. You, you just mentioned Desmond and quarterback of the future. Sure. Is, is there, have you seen enough to get a sense of that already, where you stand with him, or did you well, still again, get to we'll, see we'll see how we are in a couple weeks, and we have a whole year with him, and we've been pleased up to this point. Make sure we finish it, and there's a lot of things you got to discuss throughout the offseason. I mean, you got a lot of things when you, as you decompress the season that you go through, meetings, strategy going into free agency, which we haven't had here in two years. Obviously, where we are on the draft, we got a lot of picks, a lot of things you can move around and uh, as we get into that. So, you know, we're excited about the offseason and, and a lot of things we built here. We just want to finish this the right way. And that, that's a huge question. I mean, there's, Desmond done a lot of good things. He's out there and uh, we're excited to see what, it, what kind of step he takes from his second start, his third one as well. When you're evaluating players, it, whether it be Desmond or anybody else, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're evaluating a known versus sort of a potential and a fuzzy and unknown of sure. what you might replace them with. How do you put in safeguards to make sure that you're trying to compare apples to apples? It's not really apples to apples, as you're saying, because no matter what, I mean, you, you, we know Desmond. Right. Right. And then again, it goes back to that thing with the, with the draft. Go study drafts. And, you know, go study what's been successful, what hasn't. And a lot of it is the right climate you're stepping into, a guy that can, can operate what you're, what you're building around that. I mean, the thing is, if you continue to change strategy a bunch, I mean, you, can, you can see that too. A lot of young quarterbacks get in a place and they jerk the wheel every six months. Coordinators, coaches, personnel, even from the ground up, you don't even know what you're scouting for. These guys are you're changing your criteria all the time. That's why there has been models of consistency. You look at places like Pittsburgh and Baltimore. You know, a lot of ways to do this. One thing that when you look at history and look at consistency, it certainly makes it easier. It's not just the coach and the play callers or the position coaches. It's the whole organization, what you're, a shared vision and what you're trying to build. So that, there's a lot of factors into it. Um, so we're, we're excited about where this thing's going, but it is important for us to finish, to play well and, and to go win these games. I mean, I, I don't know how you go into a locker room and tell these grown men that are put everything they have for you, hey, guys, let's just uh, – Let's just play young guys and see what it looks like. It's not fair to the fans that come out there. It's not fair to, to everybody that, and all the effort that's put in this game. So, if I got to, you know, all have our flaws. If one of my flaws is I'm trying to, to do this thing right and win, so be it. Uh, yeah, Coach, when y'all do get to offseason, y'all have some resources available that haven't been there uh, in the first couple of years. Um, you know, uh, how do y'all, I, I know we'll get to that, but, you know, is that uh, one of the, the things that are, uh, kind of a stick that's out there for y'all when you get to the get to the off season. In fact, well, certainly our, our strategy is gonna case. is gonna you know change, right? Mm -hmm. And and we've been thankful. I mean, I've been lucky. Some of these veterans that I've gotten to work with, you know, whether they're one year guys and guys that have come here that didn't necessarily know. I mean, think of 
you know, we got CP late that first year. Mm -hmm. It's been fun to work with Patterson. He's done a terrific job here. Lorenzo Carter, Rashawn Evans. I mean, there's tons of guys, guys of the year before, but everything they had in the Doron Harmons, the Brandon Copeland, Stephen Means, guys that, you know, Lee Smith, as you really appreciate that, put it on, uh, put it on the line for you. And uh, those have just been the obstacles. And everybody, nobody cares about your problems. I mean, this is such a competitive league, and you're trying to do everything you can to win and, and build the right foundation. And we feel good about the foundation. We know we want to get over the hump, uh, set the expectations high. You know, again, we for multiple reasons, we, we didn't achieve that part. But it doesn't mean that it's uh, that we're all of a sudden just down and out because we know we're building something real here. And those are why you study history and when I brought those other examples. So certainly it's going to change the offseason plan. That now we're in year three and and some of the lumps we took along the way to get here. And so, you know, and that was one thing I think Terry will probably you guys will enjoy talking to Terry as it gets in the offseason about all that stuff and that strategy will play out. And I know uh, Mike kind of talked about uh, you take a look at other guys and so forth, uh, younger guys or practice squad guys. I know in the years past, um, Brett Grimes was doing all kind of crazy stuff out here and they went on and put him in the game and they, the, Turned into an all-pro cornerback there. There's yeah, some we've had a lot of guys we put into the game earlier or not, and we've done that here. Some guys that you know we were able to, to be patient with, like Richie, mm -hmm. the guys we had to play earlier, and it's on different wavelengths. We we constantly look, and we've been developing guys. I mean, look at what Caleb Huntley did. Mm -hmm. It's not lost on him. I mean, just because we didn't wait till week 16, and we played Caleb early, mm -hmm. and those are guys in the program that we've able to have we've been able to have success with. There's guys that we feel. Uh, are coming along, but we got to make the right decisions, and we got to be do what's best for this team and what's best for those guys in that locker room, and that's that's what this is about. So I think sometimes now when you get in these situations, it's easy for the guy on the peripheral to dismiss those guys, but you guys have covered this. You're around this team all all year, every day, and we got we got a lot of great guys in that locker room, and we want to finish this thing right because it does impact their future too. You talking about guys that maybe in year four than the last year of the contract, so you tell me, hey, you deserve to play, but man, sorry. You know, we're gonna. That, we're not gonna do that. Those guys are trying to earn a living and trying to help us win. Uh, as far as Matt Hennessy, yeah. So Henny, we'll, you know, we gotta make a decision on this week. I feel like he's making good progress. Progress fits. We'll just see how the week goes. Uh, could be an opportunity, obviously, depending on the Felipe situation, right? And depending on what the game plan. If we want to go heavy on offense or go heavy on defense, you know, just assess where he's at. Got to see where Shafe's at from, uh, you know, his uh, uh, availability to see him practice from the peace squad. So that's kind of how this will play out before now until Wednesday. Is anyone else possibly going to come back at this point? Because that's another area where. Uh, again, we're gonna have to assess, yeah. but then I'll, I'll be able to answer that for you, pretty pretty clear by Wednesday. A lot of it's gonna impact to where Chuma's at, some other things go along with it. This isn't a question about whether he's gonna come back or not, but how how, how has Casey Hayward been doing in his recovery? Do you expect kind of a full? Can I down there? You know. Case he's been around, he's traveled with us, yeah. like Adam, he's rehabbing, like like all our guys are. TQ, Kyle, you see those guys all the time. You check on them. Uh, enjoyed having Casey around. He comes with us on the road. He's a veteran, uh, so we'll see how it plays out for him, Scott. But uh, very thankful for what he did for us early this year, and love having him around. Kyle's doing his rehab here. Guys doing rehab, they check in, they get one here, they're gonna make an off-season plan. You want me to give you a minute by minute? No, I just think, <laughs> well, no, some, guy, some guys will do their rehab, go somewhere else he, to do their rehab and then just come and check can, in. I didn't know if Kyle was doing it. So guys all have different rehab structures. Okay. They're doing here, they check in here, you see them, it's part of the cooperation. And then obviously, you know, in the off season, you got plans and that's their prerogative. And guys are going to end up doing what's best for them and the team as you collaborate. And that's what we do here.